Dear students, in this session, we are going to learn about social deviance. Have you heard of the term social deviance? The two key concepts connected to central framework of sociology is deviance and control. In this session, we shall discuss social deviance, its nature and meaning, and describe various types of social deviances. We shall also discuss the various explanations of deviance and biological, psychological and sociological aspects. Each culture, religion and community has its own distinctive norms and rules. These norms and rules ask of us that we have an appropriate behavior to govern them. Law, dress codes, traffic rules, rules of games and institutions are some kind of social norms. At this point, a question that arises in our minds is this. What if someone deviates from these expectations? So study of deviance is a difficult task because some behavior that attracts severe censure between family members will sometimes go unnoticed in the society. For example, consider a small nuclear family with three members, father, mother and son. If the son breaks the tradition of the family, it is considered an offense by the father, but in the society, this may go unnoticed. In the first section, we shall discuss about social deviance and its nature. In the second section, we will talk about the different types of deviances. And in the third, we will learn the different types of deviance. The fourth section takes us through the biological and psychological explanations of deviance. The fifth section is about the sociological aspects and explanations of social deviance. Social deviance, definition and nature. To understand and discuss deviation, first we need to understand what is a defined standard or norms. Social deviance is incomplete without understanding what the norms are. Norms are standards which guide the regulating of behavior. These norms are usually surrounded by cultural and traditional values of the society concerned. So while discussing deviance, we are actually referring to violations of these norms or of that behavior that is separated from normal standards of behavior. I am sure you realize that norms are not the same everywhere. They vary across time, place and various other factors. Some behavior is considered deviant universally. For example, prostitution is considered socially deviant in certain countries, but in many other countries it is considered as an occupation and is legally approved. Some act is considered as deviant in one situation, but in another situation is not deviant. For example, we all know that homicide is a crime. It is illegal and a criminal offense. But in the battlefield, the soldier is bound to kill his enemy. This behavior on the battlefield is not considered deviant, but considered normative. Likewise, definition of social deviance varies with situations or circumstances. Let us first learn about variations that affect the definition of deviance. The first variation we are going to discuss is a variation by time. Some acts that were considered deviant at one period in time may be considered non-deviant in another. For example, in the 19th century, women pursuing education was considered deviant. Nowadays, majority of the women population pursue education and even higher studies. The second variation is by culture. In some culture, certain acts are considered deviant, but the same is not considered deviant in many others. Example, polygamy is allowed in some cultures, but it is not in others. In certain cultures, polygamy is even considered a status symbol. Even though monogamy is usually prescribed and polygamy considered illegal, the act of polygamy is actually social deviant in most cultures. There are many cultures and subcultures in our society. Free rapport between sexes in the villages is considered deviant, but in the city it is common and not deviant at all. Similar is the case of teenage smoking. In the higher classes of society, smoking is not considered as deviant. We will now see variations by social position. 
socially deviant act or behavior can vary with social status or possession. Even deviant behavior can be different among men and women. It is okay for men to walk topless but for a woman to do likewise is socially deviant. In fact, a lot of forms of deviance have actually paved the way for new things to become normal. Deviance is how society moves forward. For example, fashion is always started by some deviant act and then it becomes normal. Now we shall discuss the different types of deviance and the deviance involved. There are three types of deviances. Many sociologists have classified deviance into various types. When we talk about social deviance, we have to first think about behavior. Whatever the defining pattern that is used, deviance is always related to behavior. Let us see the three types of deviance now. Let us take a look at the first type, cultural and psychological deviation. In cultural deviation, an individual deviates from norms followed by that culture. For example, genocide. The second type of deviance is individual and group deviation. Individual deviation is one where the individual deviates from the normal behavior. For example, an educated boy consuming drugs is an individually deviating behavior. In group deviation, a group of individuals exert socially deviant behavior. For example, a street gang engaging in unlawful activities. The third type of deviation is primary and secondary deviation. Primary deviation is where the individual is actually a conformist but commits an act of social deviance. Secondary deviation is one where the individual who is labeled as a deviant and have to live with that label even though he has changed. Now let us see the types of deviants. There are five types of deviants. The first type is freak. These types of deviants are judged by the appearance. If the appearance, attitude or behavior is deviant, then they are called freaks. We see many people with very shady appearance. We conclude in our mind that these people are socially deviant. For example, coloring hair is considered as freaky among the youth. The second type of deviant is sinful. In this type, the individual is considered sinful when he or she violates certain norms, usually a religious norm. Many acts are considered sinful by religious communities. So when the religious norms are violated, these individuals are actually acting socially deviant. The third type of deviant is a criminal. A criminal is one who violates law, especially criminal law. Laws are entrusted to lead a safe life free of crime. So violating such rules are considered a social deviant behavior. The fourth type of deviant is sick. Drug addicts, heavy drinkers, homosexuals are considered as illegal during earlier times, but now it is considered as a type of sickness. Drug addicts, heavy drinkers and homosexuals have actually become victims of illnesses. But people still consider these behaviors socially deviant. The fifth type of deviant is alienation. There are many factors to take into account for alienation. Alienation can occur due to many reasons. There was a time when people suffering from AIDS were alienated, but they are not so anymore. Alienation is a difficult process to judge whether it is a deviant. We must take into consideration two points when we try to define or judge deviants, whether they are the norms of the community, the individual or the group they belong to, and also the law. Biological and Psychological Explanations of Deviation Biological explanation deals with anatomical, physiological or hereditary factors. In psychological explanations, we discuss factors like frustration, personality, movies and so on. By these explanations, we reduce the complexity of the definition of an individual being deviant or not. Let us now discuss the biological factors. In biological explanation, we deal with physical features, personality and other biological aspects. Many psychiatrists believe that social deviant behavior is mainly a biological factor. Some people are born as criminals. But there is no proof for this theory. 
DVNC can be better understood when we analyze inmates in a prison. There was a survey conducted to judge socially deviant behavior where inmates of prisons were taken as subjects. It was found from the study that many inmates displayed certain deviation in terms of shape, physical features and so on. This study thus came up with the theory that socially deviant behaviors were based on inheritance. Some of the criminal tendencies are often hereditary or inherited. But this theory was proven wrong for its lack of proper evidences or proof. When this theory failed, psychiatrists now came up with a new one. The new theory was based on the physique of the person rather than the behavior. According to this theory, people were divided into three categories. The first category was endomorphs, people who are fat. Mesomorphs was the second category, those who are fit. And the third category, ectomorphs, who are very thin, the mesomorphs. The theory said physically fit people were recruited more to perform socially deviant act. This theory was put back again because it lacked the proof to show the behavior of other inmates. Let us now move on to psychological explanations. Here we discuss about the mind or the mindset and consequent behavior of the individual rather than the body types. Factors like learning, personality, interests, willpower, ego, guilt, goals, structure, anxiety, motivations and the like go into this definition. There is a speculation that deviation arises from sickness or psychological abnormalities. There is also argument that mentally ill people take to drugs and alcohol. However, this theory is not so strong and that is really absurd to say that all those who are mentally ill behave socially deviant. So socially deviant behavior results from frustration, true or false? Well, there is no scientific explanation for this question. There is a chance for deviant behavior to arise from frustration because frustration leads to aggression and, and happens when needs are not fulfilled. Frustration due to lack of money may even lead to robbery which is a socially deviant behavior. But this theory does not tell us why some people who are frustrated do not act in a socially deviant way. Another theory states that people with superego exhibit deviant behavior. Some examples of psychological deviant behavior is suicide or homosexuality. Sociological explanation of deviance. Sociological theories are based on sociocultural concept of deviance. We will now learn the different theory sociological explanations. The first theory is anomie theory. This mainly focuses on achieving goals and socially approved ways of achieving them. The second theory is sociocultural learning theory. In this theory, we discuss the interactions between people and the study deviants. The third theory is labeling theory. This theory focuses on various acts, their meanings, their definitions and so on. The fourth theory is conflict theory. This focuses on conflicts between two groups to exploit the weaker group by labeling their acts as deviant. Let us now go into these theories in detail. The first theory, anomie theory. Anomie means without norms. It is more of conflict between norms or domination among the norms. It also explains an irresolute approach towards norms. In this theory, we take into account two elements that are important. The first one, cultural purpose, interests and goals. The cultural norm holds the same for all the members in society. The second most important element is the way we adapt in order to achieve these goals. It is we who should think about the consequences of these actions. The choice is ours to go either the socially deviant way or the socially accepted way. Every individual can have different goals. Now the second theory is socio-cultural learning theory. We have two sub-theories. One is a subculture or culture transmission theory and the second one is a differential association theory. Let us delve into subculture or culture transmission theory. But in a society, there are various cultures and religions. Since there are many cultures, there are many norms. This leads to a socially deviating behavior. The second sub-theory is the differentiation association theory. This theory explains why some people are attracted to deviant behaviors while others are not. 
Learning a deviant behavior involves acquiring a set of motives, drives, rationalizations and attitudes and specific techniques for committing the deviant act itself. The third theory we are going to see in sociological theories is labeling theory. This focuses on labeling a deviant behavior. It also focuses on the labeling of a person as deviant. For example, a child who is always labeled as bad by his parents and others gradually begins to accept the fact that he is bad and starts showing socially deviating behavior. The fourth theory we are going to discuss is a conflict theory. This theory explains the various conflicts between each norm. They would like to exercise dominant behavior. Next, we will discuss various examples of socially deviant behavior. Examples of socially deviant behavior. First example will be suicide. Suicide occurs in our world for many reasons. It takes immense courage for a person to commit suicide. If someone can no longer mentally handle a terminal illness, then they should have the option of a painful, dignified ending. The alternative seems more like torture than anything else. The next example we're going to take is abortion. Abortion is an action in which the parent or mother decides to choose whether the child will exist or not. Every year, many cases of abortion rises. Aborting a child due to selfish reasons is equivalent to murder. But there are many non-selfish cases of abortion like rape victims, birth defects. The non-selfish reasons are acceptable according to some societies. But choosing to abort the child is treated as a socially deviant behavior. Such actions are punishable under law. The next example is homosexuality. A common question arises in the mind of the present new generation. If people of opposite sex can fall in love, why not people of the same sex? For many religions and cultures, homosexuality is considered a sin. However, many cultures in today's world has accepted homosexuals and are not considered as deviancies. Even though the same cultures considered it as deviant, they now have law supporting homosexuals and are therefore considered non-deviant socially. Some say that homosexuality is genetic, but it's not. It's just the way people choose to live. The next example we will explore is prostitution. First, let us understand what prostitution is. It is the act of providing sexual services in return for monetary gains. Another example is drug abuse. Drug addicts often say that they didn't have any other option. Is that true? No. Drug abuse is never a solution to any problem. Drug trade or consumption is considered socially deviant because it destroys the psychological balance of not only the person but also the person around them. There are many crimes associated with drug trade. So in short, drug abuse is a socially deviant act. Conclusion In this session, students, you have been exposed to the meaning and nature of deviance. We saw deviance as a relative concept inasmuch as its definition varies from group to group and from time to time. It is difficult to define deviance universally as different societies differ in their norms and values. A departure from the norms and values is called deviant behavior. We raise questions on what causes deviances. We outlined various explanations for deviance and differentiated it from the explanation of deviance from the perspective of biology, psychology and sociology. In sociology, deviant behavior is seen as a consequence of certain aspects of the culture and the social structure of the society. In the last section, we saw various examples for socially deviant behavior. We listed a few of the common examples of socially deviant acts. They are suicide, abortion, prostitution, homosexuality and drug abuse. It is we who should determine the deviant behavior. The identification of deviant behavior depends on each individual. Deviant behavior is determined by judgment. Most religions ask its followers not to be a judge of their fellow citizens and to leave that to the Creator. How many times do we ask ourselves why? Why do they do such a nasty thing? Why do deviant acts flood the media? 
Now that we have understood about social deviation in detail, let us synergize and focus our efforts on how to eliminate deviance and bring harmony in the world that we live in.